Hey, what's up guys? Thank you so much for watching. Now, you see, power supply units, also known as PSU, and I was actually just reading a forum, which is Tech Power Up. I was trying to research a bit more about PSUs, and um, what I found out is that power supply units are most often the hardware that we tend to not put much emphasis compared to CPUs, motherboards, or GPUs, and stuff like that. But little that we know, or some may already know, power supply units are as important as anything else simply because without power supply units, you can't actually even boot your PC. Hence why today I have these three guys right here, um, just to have a look at it. And of course, thanks to Psychotech Malaysia, they actually sent a whole load of other stuff as well. They sent casings, they sent, um, they even sent their iGame GTX 1060, which I'll have a look at it um, once I have the time to do so. They, they sent me some mechanical keyboards as well. So I'm going to take a look at all of those stuff later. But today our biggest focus is on PSUs and I'm going to tell you, or I'm going to give you a gist of it, of what I understand about PSUs and hopefully you could benefit from it just a little bit or a bit more. Alright, first and foremost, let's have a quick look at efficiency ratings. The efficiency of a PSU simply means how efficient a power supply unit can actually convert power from AC to DC which then powers up all the components on your motherboard. So just to make it simple, now let's say that your PC components are drawing about 100 watts of power. Now I'm just citing this from Tech Power Up because you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. So if you have a PSU that is 80% efficient, it basically means you're gonna draw about 125 watts from the AC outlet. Now what I actually realized as well, which I made the same mistake, I had this interpretation or impression that a 500 watt PSU, just cause it says 80% efficiency, it means that from 500 watts, you're gonna get 400 watts of true power. And that's actually false. So basically a 500 watt PSU should be able to kick out about 500 watts of power. So it's one to one apparently to all the components on your PC or say for example, if your PC needs about 400 watts, it's gonna kick out 400 watts. If your PC needs 500 watts, it's gonna kick out 500 watts. So that's just basically it. When it comes, now, now this is where it gets a little bit, I would say numbers driven when it comes to efficiency ratings. Now I did say I'm gonna talk about efficiency ratings immediately, but I just thought that, you know what, let's talk about efficiency in general and the misconceptions as well. So now we all know that it's actually one to one, 500 watts means it does kicks up 500 watts worth of power, but let's look at efficiency rating and hopefully you get a quick or a better understanding of it. So the basic 80 plus rating efficiency means that at 20% load, at 50% load, and 100% load, it is being rated at 80% efficient. So let's take a look at bronze rating. Now, I don't actually have a bronze rated PSU right now because these three guys right here, this one, this is actually, um, this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is not rated. So I'll assume it's 80 plus because there's no logo. So this one right here, it's on platinum and this one right here, it's on gold. I'm going to go into the whole interface of fully modular and stuff later, but let's take a look at bronze rating. So basically bronze rating means that the PSU is actually rated for at least 82% efficiency at 20% load, at 50% load and 100% load. So what about gold plus rating like this guy down right here? What about this one? So when it comes to 80 plus rating and it's rated at gold efficiency, it simply means that at 87%, it's 87% more efficient at 20, 50, and 100% load. Now when it comes to 80 plus platinum efficiency, this simply means that the power supply unit is at 90% efficient at 20, 50, and 100% load. So basically right now, in summary, you can see the numbers are starting to go up when it comes to the efficiency ratings from 80 plus, bronze, silver, gold, and finally platinum. Now just to also take note, which I actually just found out, you know, I'm really, when it comes to power supply units, I'm, I'm sort of noob, you know, I just know the ratings and stuff, but I haven't actually dived down in depth in terms of the, the whole rating efficiency system and, and how much efficient percentage and stuff like that. But one thing that I've learned is that just because a power supply unit says that they have a specific amount of wattage, you don't get exactly how much you, they actually said, but you sort of have an idea on what the power supply unit is actually capable of. What about interfaces? We often hear the word modular, semi-modular, non-modular PSU, so what do they actually mean? Now, and a quick introduction about modular PSUs, they're actually fairly new compared to non-modular and semi-modular PSUs, and they aren't exactly as cheap as the other two, the non-modular and semi-modular, simply because you have a bit more flexibility as well, and you can just plug out or chop out all the cables that you don't need, and just plug in those you actually need. So it, it sort of, number one, reduces the amount of clutter, and number two, what you, some argue and some actually claim that, you know, it's sort of, creates less interference when you have a neater cable management system and stuff like that. But I, I don't actually know how true that is, but in terms of aesthetic wise, obviously a 
fully modular or a modular PSU look much better. So what I have right here is basically the F7 Battleship PSU 500 watts, the, um, the Segotep one. And this was the one that I actually told you that, you know, it doesn't actually have a particular rating um, label on it. So I would assume it's just 80 plus rated when it comes to efficiency wise. Um, the other thing that you need to also take note is that when it comes to non-modular PSUs, you can't actually remove the cables and stuff. So cable management is going to be a big pain in the ass. And, but I've actually seen some people do some modding when it comes to non-modular PSU. They sort of sleeve them individually, but I'm not too sure if that will actually void your warranty. I'm pretty sure it does, but for some, they still go ahead with it. Maybe their warranty is over and stuff like that. So that's just one thing you want to take note. All right, so what about semi-modular PSUs? Unfortunately, I don't actually have a semi-modular PSU right now. All I have is a non-modular PSU, which is this two, and this one right here, which is a fully modular. But in a nutshell, a semi-modular PSU, it's, it simply means that some of the cables are pre-attached, but you can actually remove some of it, like the PCIe, the SATA, the Molex and stuff. So those are the kind of cables that you can remove, but the main ones, like the motherboard cable, the 24-pin one, and the CPU ones are actually pre-attach your power supply units. Um, so this sort of gives you a bit more flexibility when it comes to cable management, but still not as good as a fully modular or a modular power supply unit. So what about fully modular PSU units, you know? So when it comes to PSUs that are fully modular, basically you can remove all cables, just plug in anything that you need. Obviously you got a 24 pin, the basic CPU pin and PCI pin as the whole mandatory ones and you can actually just plug in stuff that you actually need after that. And obviously that provides much more cable management, less clutter, better aesthetics. But one thing to take note, generally the fully modular power supply units are a bit bigger compared to the non-modular ones or the semi-modular ones. And the other thing to take note as well, I didn't mention earlier, if you were to get sleeves, you need to get custom sleeves for fully modular power supply units. But for semi-modular and non-modular power supply units, you can actually use extenders and that's going to cost you uh, much less. And the other thing as well that I want to actually tell before I quickly wrap up this little video is that for the price of a fully modular power supply unit, you can actually get a higher efficiency rating when uh, you can get like a plat rating non-modular or semi-modular power supply unit like this guy right here for much lesser, so it's really up to you when it comes to the trade of are you going to trade aesthetics or, or are you willing to trade efficiency rating, so that's really up to you. Alright guys, that's all I have for this little overview on power supply units. So the, the final thing that I want to say is that when you purchase a power supply unit, be sure to check the power requirements of your entire PC as well. You don't want to get something that is too, too underpowered, like you don't want to get a 500 watt PSU for a PC set that just requires 500 watt. You may want to get like maybe 600 or 650 or even 700. If you can afford 850, why not? It's future proof. And obviously the, the more expensive power supply units come with longer warranty as well. So if you just calculate on a yearly basis and you probably could save more money. I hope my little small interpretation and if I'm wrong about anything, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Once again, a big shout out to Segotep Malaysia for sending all this little stuff over. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to leave some links in the description section below as well for you to purchase them as well. If you have any other questions, drop me an email or do not forget to hit me a big like on the Facebook and hit the subscribe button right there. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.